Hello again. Well, last week there were a lot of comments on my uh, vlog and uh, some of them had some interesting thoughts and tips. So what I thought I'd do is just um, go over some of the comments and uh, share with you uh, those interesting uh, tips. Now, one of them was by Elizabeth and she mentioned that um, I often coordinate the fabrics for my uh, curtains with my wallpaper and I do and uh, she said why don't you drape the uh, fabric for your curtains against a mock-up of your wallpaper and that's a really good idea and to be honest I did that uh, I just used the wall um, as the backdrop and I draped a lot of the fabrics I had against that um, now it's a little bit more difficult <laughs> because the roof is in or the ceiling is in but at that stage I didn't have the ceiling in yet so I could just drape the fabrics here in the corner and I did that now um, I thought I should do that again and I've got my fabrics here so this is the one that's on the bed and as you can see I think if I put more of that fabric here it's going to be too much I thought that in the beginning as well here's the the other fabric that's on the bed and again it's a bit much I think it's too dark now like I said um, the ceiling is in so it's a little bit harder for me to I can't really drape it anymore um, even though the color is fantastic that's why I put it on the bed uh, I think it will be slightly dark because the wallpaper is quite light, the walls are quite light, so I don't like that. It's a little bit too dark. And the other one I had, is the, I have a lot of fabrics, but these I bought specifically for this room, uh, for this wallpaper. Beautiful color, but it's... Um, with the orange of the bed it just doesn't work with the wallpaper it does and I do like it because it's not as it's a little bit lighter lighter than the fabric of the bed crown and the bed curtains now my thought was um, to drape some of this very very thin silk and use those as curtains and they're white of course but it's a little bit boring I don't know the, the silk is beautiful I think it's called um, Habuton or something like that it's Habuton silk very thin beautifully it's very like floaty and um, you can do a lot with it but in this case I think it will be slightly boring. Now I think this is what I did a few weeks ago, or even months ago. But because, because Elizabeth mentioned it, I went through my stash of fabrics again and I came across a little packet which I think I forgot last time. And this is some silk that I bought for a previous project. And I can't open the packet. Why is it open? Oh, yeah. And this is something I bought uh, during COVID. Uh, we were all uh, quarantined, I think. At least we weren't allowed to go out to the shops. But this fabric shop, um, were, they were very, very kind and they sent me swatches because I talked to them on the phone and they sent me several swatches of fabric and I ended up not using it after all I bought this top one because I thought it would be good see I also had different ones but none of these were correct for the 
project. So <laughs> now I had this beautiful silk. Um, so it's, it's so important to actually go and see the fabric in real life. I find it very difficult to shop from uh, for fabrics online. But so this one was it's beautiful, but it wasn't the right color. Now, when I put it in here, all of a sudden maybe it's the wrong direction. Oh, there goes my beautiful Japanese fire screen. Put that in a safe place. Um, but anyway, when I put this fabric in here, all of a sudden I thought, oh, that might work. Um, it reflects the gold. There's some yellowy, orangey yellow in the, in the wallpaper. It also kind of picks up on the orange in the curtains, but not too much. Actually, it's a pink what's, that's in there, woven in there. Here you can see the fabric is bright yellow and pink. And that gives it a golden appearance with a almost orangey, which is, makes sense because red and yellow makes orange. So pink and yellow also makes a sort of orange, a soft orange. I actually really like that. Let me get the camera. So I might... Yeah, the colors are slightly different on camera. This one, uh, on camera it looks a little bit brighter. And in real life it's a little bit softer in color. But... Like I said, I do like that. So I may make <laughs> curtains out of that fabric. Uh, so, uh, not very heavy ones, just... Um, I don't know. We'll see. Because I don't want to cover up this area where I'll have uh, shoes and handbags like that one. Which just happens to be yellow. That's just a coincidence. I'm actually not a huge fan of yellow in general, but in this case, ooh, I think my light <laughs> almost died. What happened there? Um, um, but anyway, uh, thank you, Elizabeth, for um, suggesting that that and. Uh, Having, you know, I, I went back and did that again and actually found this fabric, which I think will work. And Elizabeth said, uh, do a mock-up wall with the wallpaper. I only have this very sh small uh, sample left of that wallpaper, so I can't do that. Uh, but here's the fabric. <laughs> And in the room, like I said, with the ceiling on there, I can't drape anymore. It's just uh, too difficult to get in to get in there. But um, here's the fabric, and I hope the camera picks it up. The two tones with the pinkish, almost orange, soft orange, which really is really nice with that yellowy orange in there. Um, so. And I like that it's light and bright, and it picks up on the gold as well uh, of the bed. So I think that will be a really nice choice. Janine mentioned her friend Fatima, or Fatima, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, I actually have a friend whose name is Fatima. And she's from France, but I know a lot of people from, for instance, here in the Netherlands um, who are have uh, Moroccan or Turkish roots. Their name is pronounced Fatima. So I don't know if it's Fatima or Fatima. Anyway, she is from the Vancouver Miniature Show um, and also Bo Minis. Uh, and she had a tip. And last week you saw me do this with um, make a template out of the photocopied paper. 
And Fatima, she said, um, use some uh, acrylic and cut the uh, template out of that. So I'll do that. I don't know if that will... Now, I don't have a lot of acrylic, um, you know, from packaging material or stuff like that. But we don't get that a lot anymore here. As they're trying to reduce plastics. So a lot of the packaging material has changed and is now paper or card or at least uh, the things that I buy. So I don't have a lot of this stuff. So this is maybe a, a bit thin, but um, you know, the purpose is, or it should be transparent. So that's the main thing. And just cut that out. And um, I am guessing that this technique is coming from, uh, what is it, quilting. I'm not sure, I'm not a quilter myself, although I have made a quilt once. <laughs> that was for my nephew. Um, he's like in his early 30s at the moment. Um, and that quilt still isn't finished. <laughs> but anyway, I did not use that this tip then. Uh, but I, I, I do think this is probably from the quilting um, community. I'm not sure. So, and now you take the fabric. Or what's left of it. I don't have a lot left. but And because... Now you have a template which is transparent. It is very easy to see where the pattern uh, can go. And uh, it's a very helpful thing. <laughs> I really like that tip. I, I didn't think of that myself. So thank you uh, Fatima or Fatima and also Janine who suggested, uh, I'll probably talk to her friend about it. So yeah, good tip. Now, another thing Janine mentioned is that um, uh, last week I showed you the position of the rooms in when they're finished in the doll's house. And the bedroom is going to be on the third level. And um, Janine said uh, it was a good reminder to check the position of which one observes uh, the rooms. And um, it's something I do take into uh consideration. I'm quite tall. Uh, this is the bedroom of my first canal house and this is when I'm standing up. Uh, of course I'm making it for myself but uh, I know when people visit who are shorter than I am um, they can't look into this bedroom and they need a stool or, or steps or something. Um, this room I kind of when I'm setting up I Kind of look down into it so this is my position of my eyes sort of and so i have to bend my knees a little bit to come down to the other normal level now when i'm sitting down i'm at eye level with the dining room now here i'm standing up <laughs> um this is Kind of what I'm seeing. No, I'm not seeing the table. So I'm seeing this more or less. <laughs> of course I again I have to bend down a little bit to see everything. And then there's the kitchen. Again I can see it really well when I'm sitting down. 
but when I'm standing up, I cannot. I have to come down really <laughs> low to view it. But I think the lower rooms are not so much of a problem unless you have a problem uh, bending down. But the rooms at the top, they can be problematic for visitors or if you're not that tall yourself. And uh, while I'm sitting down here, oh, see the light's not working. That happens a lot. Well, you know, it happens to everyone. <laughs> um, but then, of course, you can see the ceilings really well as well, which I like. You don't see them too often. Uh, I remember making that one. <laughs> Anyway, um, so that is something to keep in mind when you're building a doll's house or making rooms. And I forgot about the attic rooms. Uh, I cannot even look inside these rooms myself without a step or a ladder <laughs> or a camera. <laughs> now, the last comment I wanted to talk about was by Dorothy from Jojo's mum, Dorothy2829, and she asked me why I used asset free card to make the um, pelmets. And uh, I said, well, I'd like to think that if, if my doll's house survives me and maybe is handed over to the next generations, then the silk and the paper would stay in good condition longer when it does not contain or is touched by acids. Acid break down, breaks down the fibers of the silk and the paper over time. And uh, well, that's that was my comment. And like I said in my comment, um, I'm not a conservator. Uh, I don't know too much about it, but um, the pH in uh, anything acid or a low pH just just is not good for most things. It's not good for your body. It's <laughs> it's not good for silk. It's not good for paper. So I try to use materials that um, uh, are acid free or and other materials that will stand the test, which I think will stand the test, test of time. Like I said, I'm not a conservator. I'm not a chemist. <laughs> I did do some research uh, when I started out in these, you know, in making my doll's house. And in the beginning, I did use um, other materials. Um, so like the, the, the dining room, I think I used uh, orange crates. And there may be um, chemicals in there that are not too good for the uh, for the paints or for the fabrics, um, but we'll have to see. <laughs> but uh, at a certain time when I started doing this research and um, I started finding out a little bit more about it, um, I started using different materials. And of course you cannot stop everything. Uh, light is bad for uh, a lot of things. Uh, humidity is bad for it, uh, too much or too little. Uh, it can also be too dry, so then it goes brittle. Um, high temperatures, cold temperatures, <laughs> I mean, every, there, a lot of things. In, dust is very bad for fabrics and for other uh, things as well. Um, so the, the quality of the material and the, the, the environment uh, where your doll's house is, all impact um, on on the um, uh, way that it ages and um, deteriorates because everything deteriorates in time. So I try to prevent that in a small way by using simple things like acid-free paper. Now, acid-free paper, um, I think it's paper that uh, like this. This is what I use a lot of times and here it says acid free here on the console there's a little mark on the back here it's 
as acid free and uh, it, it doesn't mean that they actually use materials that don't contain any acid but it's neutralized um, by adding I don't know uh, what is it magnesium or something I, I can't remember exactly what they add or but anyway it neutralizes the acid uh, which is which helps to uh, stabilize the fabrics or paints too, uh, whatever you're using. So that's why I do it. And uh, but you know, it's not really necessary. <laughs> uh, and maybe who knows in 20 years time or 50 years time, they may have found something that uh, you know either says ah that. You shouldn't have done that or they may find something that helps to preserve the, the fabrics and the materials forever who knows we'll see it may not even survive that long <laughs> but anyway that's why i'm using it uh, so um, i hope you uh, enjoyed this episode uh, thank you for watching until next time <laughs>